Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Jesse, and today's town hall will be covering the Koha sandboxes. We have with us Kyle Hall and Nick Clemens, and they will be discussing the process. Uh, this session will be recorded, so you'll be able to go back and watch it um, if need be. And so with that, I am going to um, let Kyle and Nick take it over. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. OK. Can everyone see my screen now? Yeah, looks good. All right. So I am at the new Bywater Solutions Sandbox system. Uh, you can see the address to get to it is sb1.sandboxes.bywatersolutions.com. Now, this is quite a bit different than the old sandbox system, which is why we're having this town hall. Uh, I think it is. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's a big improvement. There are still some um, features that it could use, in my opinion, uh, but I'm sure that it will continue to evolve and get better from here. So you can see this is what I would call the landing page, where it shows you sandboxes that already exist and the things you can do with them. But let's start with creating a brand new sandbox. So you do that from the create link here. Now I will note there is an actual limitation to the number of sandboxes that can exist at a time because otherwise it would just fill up the memory of the, the server and then nothing would work. Uh, I believe the limit is 10 right now or 15. Once it hits the limit, this create button will no longer take you to the create page. Uh, and at that point, we'll have, uh, you'll need to find like an old sandbox that somebody's not used in a while or something like that or get permission and just delete one of the old ones so that you can create a new one. So if we go back to create, it's pretty simple. It's just a form you fill out. So uh, you put in your name and this will be used for signing off patches. So you can use your real name or if you have a nickname or an alias, whatever you want for signing off, whatever you use, that's what you want. Same goes for email. This email will be used for signing off. Uh, you actually do have a chance to change that before you do sign off too. And then we choose a name. Uh, keep it simple, just some letters and some numbers. So I'm going to call this here. We had uh, an idea. So Nick suggested that I test this bug let's get rid of that bug 21984 so let's go ahead and give this a name uncreatively let's call it bz21984 so now you can put a bug in right now uh, and it will be applied, but I'm gonna leave that blank. You can also just check out uh, master by leaving that blank. Uh, if you wanna get really advanced and you see one of those bugs where it's like the patches are too big to attach to Bugzilla, so instead they give you a, a Git remote and a branch to check out, you can paste those into here uh, to check out that Git remote and branch instead of using a bug number. Uh, we're gonna skip over that for now, but that is an option. You can put in an optional description and notes. Both of those are basically arbitrary fields that just take some text. And then we have our CAPTCHA, which uh, as with the previous version is simply Koha. And you can see at the bottom, it tells you the uh, initial login and password are going to be Koha, and the database user is Koha underscore, uh, and then the sandbox name. In this case, it is bz21984, and the password is literally password. So let's go ahead and hit submit, and we see, so we see the two ones that existed, and we see their status is provisioned. We see ours is provisioned pending. So that means nothing's happening with it right now. Uh, if there were a bunch of things uh, at provision pending, it means that you are in line. Uh, this system only does one at a time so that it doesn't get overwhelmed. If we go ahead 
Uh, Nick just asked if it sends emails when ready. It does not. Uh, it doesn't need to. It will tell you when it's ready. So I'm going to hit refresh. And you can see I'm be it says provisioning. That means it's actually in the process of creating my sandbox. And so we can watch this. You see we have a lot of logs that we can see, which I think is pretty spiffy. Uh, and if we check out the provision log, this is really the one that will tell us where in the process of provisioning we are. So you can see it's doing stuff. You don't really need to, uh, you can read through this if you want, but you don't need to um, know too much about what's actually going on. That's the magic of this. But you see at the bottom, we do have to pause for a minute to wait for the, the Koha instance to be created and set up. And if you just keep refreshing, you'll continue to see things happening. So right now it's uh, indexing the sample records that it has. We can also take a look at the Docker log. Uh, so this can be useful in general, especially if things aren't uh, going right. The Docker log might tell you some things that you wouldn't get just from Koha. So let's go back here. Let's refresh again. And you see we're done. We know this because we see this play recap and it tells us what's happened. So we didn't really have to look at that. We just could have hit refresh on this page over and over until we saw provisioned. So now this is theoretically a running sandbox. So I'm going to cross my fingers and click the staff button. Hooray! So, like we said, uh, the username and password are both Koha, so we can log in, and here we are at a functioning sandbox. I'm going to try, let's try doing a search, make sure that searching works. Certainly looks like it's working to me. And let's check the OPAC as well, and the OPAC looks just fine to me as well. All right, so let's go through the other logs. So you saw the provision log, you saw the Docker log. It's not too interesting right now. I'm gonna close all these tabs for now. We have a few others. Uh, so the next section are the Koha logs themselves. Most of the stuff Koha logs is in this Koha plaque log. And you can see there's uh, a lot going on in here right now. So if you're um, trying to figure out why something's going wrong, this might be helpful. The next one is the Koha internet error log. So on ours, it's literally empty right now. Uh, this used to be where all of the staff side logging happened, but now that we use Plaque, only a few scripts that don't go through Plaque get logged here. And the same thing goes for the OPAC. So you see the Koha Apache OPAC error log, and it's almost empty. It just has a little bit in there. And finally, we have the Koha Git log. This is pretty useful. Uh, this will give you like the last 20 things that uh, have been applied on this sandbox. And this is a good way to know if your patch has been applied. So right now, this is just master. If we were to go look at um, master uh, Koha on the on GitWeb, this would be the last bug that Nick pushed. So let's go ahead and do some stuff with this. So if we look at actions, we have a few useful things. Restart services restarts all of the stuff. It, um, if, especially if you've applied more patches to your sandbox, you're probably going to want to restart all the things. So this restarts Apache, it restarts Plaque, and it restarts Memcache. Uh, so any, uh, if you apply a patch uh, and you don't restart Plaque especially, then it's like that new, um, new code changes haven't been applied yet. So you definitely, after applying bugs, want to restart all the things. The next one 
is a zebra reindex. So if you do some cataloging that you need to test for searching, after you do the cataloging, after you change your records, you're going to want to do the full zebra reindex. And the way this works is as soon as you click it, it starts reindexing. You're not going to see anything in this window until it's finished the full reindex. So you can see our little spinner there. So I'm just going to leave that as it is and come back here and we see the next tool, which actually lets us add new stuff to our sandbox, which is apply patches. Uh, you can see now our reindex did finish and it can tell you how many things got indexed. All right, so let's try applying this patch. So I'm just going to paste that in here, paste that bug number in and hit submit. Uh, you're applying that to Katrin's sandbox, I think. Oops, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Which is why it, oh, see, we need to um, take care of that. Let's go back and let's apply it to the correct thing. All right, let's apply it to mine. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> and we will cross our fingers. All right, so we have our bug number. So let's go look at that git log again and see if that's on here now. And there it is, perfect. So we know for a fact that this patch has been successfully applied to our sandbox. If there had been more than one patch, you would see all the different patches here as well but this one only has one, as you can see on Bugzilla. So let's go ahead and restart all the things because you can never restart all the things too much. And that looks good. So I'm gonna close up all these tabs for now and we'll go back to staff side and let's look at the test plan. So this is a little bare bones. Uh, so. Well, the hardest part is probably going to be getting two pages of results. So the particular bug for the details isn't important, but this is about um, those reusable parameters. So let's follow the test plan. Let's go to the reports module and create a new report from SQL. And let's see, is that all I need to do? Let's go ahead and save it. And if we run the report, what would be good values for cat and dog, Nick? Cats, dogs. Okay. <laughs> Just something to show that it's getting values. Okay. Oh, I see that your test plane makes perfect sense now. <laughs> That's very, very clever. I applaud you. All right, so now in, in master currently, paging with these reusable things doesn't work. So if we go to page two, we get results, which is exactly what we wanted. All and right. normally what you would do with a test plan like this is Kyle had showed you he loaded master initially. If he had run the test plan before he applied the patches, you would have been able to see the problem as well. Um, yeah. That's usually a good idea when you're testing bugs is to make sure that you can recreate the actual error that is um, being reported in the bug and then apply the patches to see if you can fix it. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, that is a really good way of doing things is to just create a sandbox with just master and then go through the test plan to prove the bug still exists because sometimes bugs do inadvertently get fixed by other patches. And assuming the bug still exists, then you can apply the patches, restart the things and make sure that those patches fix the bug as advertised. Okay, so that I believe completes the test plan, at least the second half since I kind of jumped the gun. So now we can sign off on this. So I am going to go ahead and go back to actions and go to our last tool, which is sign off patches. And you see, we put in our name and our email address previously. So they're pre-filled but you can change them at this time if you don't want to use those for signing off. It does ask us for the bug number. 
and it asks us how many patches are there on that bug. So we see there is merely one patch as we saw before in the git log. So I'm gonna put a one in there and again, we put in Koha for a captcha and hit submit. And you see there's a warning. It does not set the bug to signed off yet. So after we know that the, our patch has been uploaded, we will have to go ahead and change that. It's not the most difficult thing in the world. So this looks like it worked. So if we come back here, we will see the new patch is the last patch uploaded is now from Bywater Sandboxes. And if we look at it, it is signed off in my name. So it's still, it needs signed off, needs sign off. So we would change it to signed off. Now, since I am also from Bywater, I'm not going to change it to signed off. I would definitely encourage anyone watching to go ahead and go through this on their own. Uh, with this and sign it off so that we can get this into master. Finally, if you're done with a sandbox, the nice thing to do is to get rid of it. Uh, that way we don't have it, the, the thing filled up with sandboxes that nobody is using and then make people guess which one it, it has been used uh, most recently. So let's go ahead and hit delete and we'll see it changes to deletion pending and it's going to get, it's much quicker deleting things. At least I thought it was, there we go. And it's gone, all cleaned up. So now someone else can come and create a new one. And that is pretty much all there is to using the new sandbox system. Uh, do we want to open the floor up for questions? Yes. If you have a question about the process, um, you can either use the chat box or the Q&A box. We are monitoring both. Um, if you have a question about uh, any of the processes that uh, Kyle and Nick have mentioned. And I'll just go ahead and add, um, as I always like to do, if you see a bug out there that you're interested in testing or confirming and it's already signed off and you just want to sign it off again, you are more than welcome. Um, you know, more yeah. testers always help. It's always great to verify that everyone can recreate the bug and that the solution works for everyone. Um, feel free to go beyond the test plan and test the edge cases, which we try to catch, but sometimes we miss. Um, and literally anyone is welcome to sign off. Um, yes. Any librarians out there who are interested, if you have patrons who are interested and wanna help and get their hands dirty, if you have students who want to get involved who are looking for some sort of computer project. We welcome everyone. Um, the only thing you have to do for signing off is follow the test plan. If the test plan works, you can sign it off. Even if there are other problems, that's the QA job to catch. Um, so don't, don't worry, you know, if you're like, oh, well, I don't understand how it's working. You don't have to understand. You just have to confirm that it does work as you expect on the user side. So please use them. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. We would be thrilled if every patch had 10 sign-offs on it. More sign-offs means more confidence in the solution. Well, I okay, we, either... we, we, we have a question. We do have a question from Marty. Um, she said, so there is no minimum required number of sign-offs to mark it as signed off. No, one, one sign-off is enough to mark something as signed off. But if you see something, a bug fix that you are interested in, uh, and you also want to test it and make sure it works for your particular cases, then please go ahead and add another sign-off. Or feel free to comment and say something if you see a problem with the sign-off. Um, in most cases, if we, if we want more than one sign-off, um, either a QA person or the developer or somebody will actually write on the bug. Like, I think we need two sign-offs here. Mm -hmm. If it's something that affects functionality that we think might be drastically different between types of libraries, academic and public or um, consortial and 
uh, standalone, then we might want more than one sign off just to kind of make sure that we're not breaking anyone's workflow. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. Any other questions out there? Okay, Emily has asked, are instructions for the process Kyle just walked us through available anywhere? I don't believe there are, but we could certainly add some. We have recorded this session and we'll be putting it up on YouTube as well as our um, Bywater website. And we could certainly add, um, we'll look at Kyle, Nick, you're so good. Nick has Nick, sent out a, a link. Uh, a previous video walkthrough I have also created. Excellent. And there are- We could write, we could write some instructions out too though, yes. under the video. Um, and we can post those over to the community wiki because these are open to everyone to use. Um, if our Bywater ones are ever full, there's also the PTFS Europe sandboxes, which everyone is welcome to use as well. They use the same system. Um, Great. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, excellent, Kyle, thank you. This was a, a great walkthrough for people to see. Um, and, and Nick, thank you for jumping in and, and sharing all those links on the chat as well. If we don't have any other questions, um, we will make this recording available um, on all of the outlets and, and we'll share it um, via our YouTube channel, the website and, and on the community. Um, if you ever have questions, please don't hesitate to ask and uh, we thank you all for coming and Kyle and Nick, thank you so much for, for walking us through the process. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of the morning. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.